Good morning, good morning, Sir Martin. What's cooking? November 20th, 2023. Two days away from pastelation. Episode 103. Today gonna be a rough one because the newspaper got a lot of things in it and I am just scratching my head right now. I don't know what to do or what to really say. So, let me just hold on a minute there, see if I'm connected because I did some change-ups on my chat and, and how, how, how I was sharing it, etc. Because now I'm seeing something popped up here. So, yeah, we on, man. Okay, we got to go then. All right. Let me do this. The government. The government needs to help NVGB recover soonest from a very serious financial crisis that seems to have affected the company. Now, there's a lot of pushing and shoving between the no party leader and the management of NVGB. And I will let them um, continue doing their thing there. All I'm saying is this. The country has one utility company and it needs help. YGB isn't taking solar farming on right now with monies from Holland that are available. It's just a huge question mark. There's a lot of things going on on Facebook. GB is being bashed every day. Not for what the leader of the now said, but for what GB is not saying. And I, I think we all got to come to the table, sit down and work out what's best for GB. But what's best for GB right now is a financial loan. GB needs money. GB needs to be able to stay afloat. GB is paying a lot of money on fuel. $50 million leaves St. Martin every year on fuel by GB. $50 million. 20% of that is $10 million. So that $10 million, instead of buying fuel, maybe we could have started doing solar panels with GB. I don't understand why we are not doing it. You know, solar panels and waste of energy are two things that can happen right now. Even NRPB is running a program on solar panels, but you ain't hearing nothing. They're supposed to be doing waste management and have a waste to energy pro, um, plant built, but you ain't hearing nothing. You're supposed to have recycling, but you ain't hearing nothing. And that is the problem. We play in politics where we shouldn't be playing politics. That's the unfortunate part. But at least I hope people are listening. GB needs a financial injection. They're not going to survive without it. Let us not fool ourselves. All these bills, at least there was a rectification from GB in the papers where people that have bills and need assistance can go in and discuss a payment plan with them. So when you get the 20 bills, just go in there and have a discussion with them and get a payment plan for 20 months if you need them because it's 20 bills. Whatever it is, try to get a payment plan and... Help yourself. Don't, don't wait to be cut and then your business or your home is in darkness. Let me congratulate the Prime Minister publicly. See, I bash her a lot. But when you got to congratulate, you do that too. You've got to be big enough to say so. The Prime Minister forced through against some of her coalition partners an Antigua something. Remove the curtains. Keep the phones out of the voting bureaus. Make sure that the Bulgarian train, they call it, so you're throwing in dummy ballots and, and, and or throwing in ballots that are already pre-circled um, so that votes have been regulated for payment. All of these things now are going to be stopped or at least slowed down significantly. Now, I know a lot of people that are in Parliament had other ideas and thought this wasn't going to pass because when it comes to Parliament, they're going to stop it. The crap will smoke your pipe. The law, unfortunately, allows the Prime Minister with a, what they call a national decree containing general measures and El Beham to make such a change. She made the El Beham, she presented it to the Governor, she defended it by the Governor, and the Governor agreed to sign off on it and thus the curtains are gone and naturally all the phones and all these things going to become a whole discussion now the thing is this in the council of ministers this vote wasn't unanimous there was a split down the middle in the coalition the coalition 
on the floor of parliament they didn't agree with it either some of the coalition members so it clearly shows you that the integrity that we want to talk about this this government is integra is absolutely not true there's a serious discrepancy about moving the curtains or not i want to thank the pfp for bringing this to the floor of parliament and that the governor the government in particularly the prime minister picked up on this and ran with the electoral reform this is a great step moving towards electoral reform i know there are some people going to question it and i myself i have a good legal team i ask them to give me their opinion and i want to put this opinion here now too because i think that's only fair the question that we have is as follows i wonder if the voting bureau chairperson as an order measure can prevent or forbid persons making a selfie with their voting form so you're voting ballot you take a picture of it with yourself you hold it up you take a picture you're making a selfie the reason i'm saying this is because in 2014 in the netherlands the curtains were down to but the minister of i believe it was interior affairs informed the public that the stem fees are not prohibited by law so taking a selfie with your voting ballot is not prohibited by law that has to be cleared up here in samaritan is that allowed yes or no because if it's allowed caught in a no caught in game on you see so we got to understand madam prime minister and to the chair lady of the voting bureau where we stand with that now remember government can only forbid search or fine somebody for taking a picture of their voting ballot if this is regulated by national ordinance not by a national ordinance containing general measures but by a national ordinance food for thought people now madam prime minister i just said congratulations and i was proud of you and you just messed up my whole monday morning when i pick up the newspaper and i read that let me grab it here to make sure i got a headline correct because i want to distribution of voting cards to start november 25th at the government building madam prime minister with all due respect to you you stop it you going to send people from district number 1 2 3 and 15 that's over 4000 people you going to send them to stand up in the sun in a line to get a voting card are you serious or you rig the elections make sure people don't get their voting cards cuz nobody going to come and stand up in the sun you can't even help 100 people a day that make appointments and go to the government building but you want 4000 people to stand up in the hot sun to go wait for a voting card what happened to the post office it closed they ain't functioning anymore they got no more cards you saving money what are you doing you see now this is a court case you going to lose hands down because you intentionally trying to ensure people don't get their voting ballots because all the people you want to get it you going to make sure it reaches there that do prime minister is a serious serious matter and i'm going to be dealing with this matter publicly i'm going to call you out on it every time i come on here and since i'm three times a week on here and choose the nights also brace yourself brace yourself for one because this one is extremely critical what you are doing now christmas seasons are coming and all these things and you going to tell people to stand up in the sun to wait for a voting card no send them around with the post office and whatever doesn't get given out beats 5000 at least 17000 were given out don't play this game don't do that today i want to focus on public transportation what exactly are we doing to those that make a living in this field and and i chose this because i was approached over the weekend mm that nice cup of coffee in my gb cup telling gb thank you anyway and the people said mr bankamper 
can you explain us what's really happening with this new law? And I decided, you know what? Let me let me delve into the law because look, I hear a lot of stories about who's selling plates and who's doing this and 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 people that are non-residents are getting plates, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Complaints have been um filed by the national detectives, I believe. Some some you know, you're hearing a lot of things. But I just want to check the law. So I decided let me delve into the law myself. And look if this law is even legal. Not because they pass it makes it legal, you know. Because we do things in this country and then we scratch our head. Because in this law, we go about talking about people being registered by SZV. But does the law really allow that? The new to be national health insurance, the SAHA, the AHA, whatever they want to call it now, is not going to be in effect come the 1st of January 2024. The same period of time this law is going into effect. Listen carefully. The SAHA that would have regulated bus drivers becoming insured by SZV is not in effect. So this law has a flaw in it because it says come January 1st. So ministers Get off your high stupid ass and fix this now before you create a blunder come January 1st. Because there are a lot of things in this law that are not adding up. People get a law, sorry, get a license and now they ask for a help driver because of age. They're 70 years old and you want to know because for them to drive, they must also do a medical and make sure that they're mentally still on once they're over 60. So primarily seniors that use the bus license that they have or the taxi license that they have because some of them even have a handicap. They were drivers, but then they got ill. They got a handicap, be it a stroke, whatever. They use a driver to make income so they still have a little something besides whatever pension they have be it the AOV pension. Now, you know AOV, for you to get full AOV, 1,224 guilders, you have to be living here for 50 years uninterrupted. That's another story on its own. So a lot of people don't have that. Because if you were living here for 50 years uninterrupted, that means you gotta be in your 60s, high 60s, 70s, if you ever went to school off the island. Now, what does this really mean for these people? Because if my memory serves me well, because nowadays the new law says anybody that has a bus license or a taxi license and they need a driver, so they need somebody to drive for them, because they have this made a distinction between a driver and a help driver. And I'll get to that just now. But what they're saying is simple. You need a driver, then you have to open a company, be it a sole proprietorship or be it an NV. You have to go and register at the Chamber of Commerce. Then you have to register the person at SZV. And this is where it stands. How can you register the person at SZV if SZV's laws don't allow it? SZV law don't allow it. So if anybody needs a driver, crap a smoky pipe, they lose their license. That's how it has been set up right now. Now, the minister of Tiat was well aware that the Saha Aha National Health Insurance wasn't going to damn place come January 1st, 2024. He knew that. He knew that. Because he changed this in September last. Month and a half ago. September 11th, they had a rush at a government building for everybody to come and register. Resident. Um, permanent resident, non-Dutch ho passport holders, just come. Then we had a sharing of number plates we understood in St. Peter's by the house of a candidate. And now you enforce a law, Mr. Minister, Council of Ministers, that is against the existing law of SSV. Or did that change lately? Because I didn't read that no place. And I can tell you 
that when people wanted to register drivers at SZV, because they were on payroll, they were told, no, the law does not allow that. And here we have an idiot going to pass a law, enforce a law, but the people can't register. So you want to take away the licenses from those people that need a driver. That's what you're doing. No more, no less. You see, Minister, you thought that everyone would just stay quiet and accept your BS. But that's not going to happen. People are talking, people are coming out, people are asking questions. And when they come by me, I decided, let me give this thing a little more insight. Let me go read up on this thing a little, little better. Because even the help drivers now are there for the period of time that you are at O. So it means you can't work. For that period of time, you'll get a help driver. But if after a month, you got to go back to work because SZV says so, because that's another joke, SZV going to tell you to go work so that the help driver then stops. But how are you getting checked by SZV? Because you cannot be insured as a bus driver. So how does this work? Your house doctor going to tell you? Just stay home. I'll give you a letter for a year then. Because there's absolutely no control. SFV is out of the picture. As long as the AHA, SAHA, National Health Insurance, whatever you want to call it, is not in effect, this law cannot function as is. And I hope that those in authority are listening before you all end up with a barrage of court cases in your backside come January 1st. Because what you are saying cannot work right now. It cannot work. Yet, you know, they're waving a proud flag. We're doing things for the people. We're going to help people. Yeah, if you take $6,000 for a plate, as the school children are saying, you're helping yourself, not the people. A lot of people get a plate that shouldn't have gotten a plate. Anybody that's Dutch deserves it. I agree wholeheartedly because that's what it was. When did the law change that non-Dutch citizens can also get a bus and taxi license? When did that change? Maybe the minister can be so nice to come out and put in front of everybody, prove me wrong when that law changed and it was published in the National Gazette because I can't find it. I can't find this. But hey, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. But we'll see. We'll see because I don't think I'm wrong. You know, when you read the law, just the purpose. The policy aims to adjust the latest memorandum of March 1st, 2019, published March 21st, 2019. And the published, eh? that's in the National Gazette. All right? So we're doing this to enhance the opportunities for people in the sector. That's what I read out of this. The general application, the general rules as established in this policy shall apply to existing and new public transportation license holders. Great. The legal authority is vested in Article 10 of the sub um, sub A of the National Ordinance of Public Transportation. But here we go, the goals and principles, and this is where it gets ticklish. The Minister of Tourism, Economic Affairs, Traffic and Telecommunication is of the opinion that the public transportation database of licenses needs to be cleaned up and the proper monitoring and issuance system put in place. This is in consideration of, amongst others, the amount of license plates not being collected annually, the number of licenses not currently in use, and the current barriers which prevent for those interested and actively engaged in the operations to obtain their own licenses. And here it comes. With the adjusted monitorium, moratorium, sorry, the minister aims to put corrective measures in place without compounding the current issues. So with the adjusted moratorium. So he's going to adjust the moratorium. If you read this, you want to believe there are a lot of licenses not being used, not being picked up. So we're going to bring it down to make sure that it doesn't go crazy. As the moratorium is being adjusted, listen carefully, 
to allow equal opportunity by ensuring that licenses can be issued when they become available within the capped amount. So, you adjust the moratorium and put in a cap. Is it up or down? Because that's not being said. Well, I'll tell you from now. It's up. They went up. And then licenses become available. They'll give them to you. But how do they give them to you? Is there a procedure? Yeah, everybody come and sign in fast. What is the criteria? Anybody could get. Pass with my house in St. Peter's. Fix it up and we're good to go. Is that how we're doing it? I ask it publicly. Take me to court. It's that simple I am. I ain't playing with this one. You all are destroying seniors with making a living. You all know just as good as me, the census just come out. Census in Martin 2022, 23 clearly states for a family to live, they need 3,552 guilders. You all pay minimum wage of 1700 and something. These people are trying to make a living with these number plates, the taxi and the bus license. And you want to take it from them and give it to other people. Why is that? I thought you just said you wanted to help your people in St. Martin. You sure you want to help them? Or you want to rip them off? Because... The licenses are going to be issued on a first come, first serve basis and will be made available to three groups. The current license holders wishing to change their current license to another license, like bus or taxi. Current license holders of a license to function as a help slash assistant driver who wish to apply for their own license. But how does that keep the cap maintained? Because if these people leave from where they're driving, I would assume that people that had them before go and get back a help driver. Or is it the intention that you're going to tell those people, no, you can't get a driver no more, and the license is gone? What is it exactly? Because you're very vague here. Extremely, extremely vague. But again, like I said, it is what it is. So then I wanted to go and say, okay, let me go look at, for example, the policy details. How are they dealing with the policy? And that's where it gets a little more murky again. Because the moratorium of bus, taxi, TNGs has been changed to caps largely based on the number of licenses and the associated vehicle registration plates used to date. Which means the cap had to come down. Because that's what a complaint was about. That they were not being used. So the moratorium, we can bring it down to cap it to those that are being used. But that is not true. That is not true. They forgot to put the word new. Because no amounts went down. Now then there comes out of the blues. The moratorium for the car rental licenses has been lifted. So we can go and apply for car rentals again. The problem is this. People in Samaritan who have a car rental license have a difficult time finding their way on the market for the simple reason that there are a lot of car rentals that also operate on the Dutch side with French number plates. And nothing against that that we use in French number plates. But French number plates mean less income for the coffers of the Dutch side. Because you limit car rentals to 50 plates, uh, 100 plates, and they have another 200 plates from the French side because they have a company on the French side too. But they are operating off of the airport or the harbor here. That, that, that's a problem. Because you're killing the local car rentals from the Dutch side. So minister, why didn't you enhance more plates to those on the Dutch side that would have wanted plates for their business instead of opening the market. Are you planning to bring in a new car rental company with a hundred plates, 200 plates? Well, what is it going to be? What is it going to be? Because again, 
All we're going to do is have a merry-go-round of who can get a license and who can get a license. And then you want to put in criteria about show where you get the money from to pay for the cars, etc., etc. So you're basically trying to destroy some of the rental companies here too because you're going to check all of these things. If I read your, your lock, correct. But maybe, maybe I'm reading it wrong. Maybe you can come out and explain it a little better. Whoever told you what to do, tell them to come out and explain it. Because you clearly don't have a damn clue what's going on. All licenses will be reissued with a validity of five years with the renewal upon request of the license holders. Now, who, who is that exactly now? The help driver with a license or the plate owner who has an employee? Who, how, how, how does this work? Who gets the license to drive? Is it the driver or is it the owner of the plate, the company? Because everybody who needs a driver must have a company now. Be it a sole proprietorship, be it an NV, a BV. By this law, you must have a license. So whom gets the license? The driver or the company? Because if it's the company, the company can change drivers every week if they so desire. Every week, once they're working for the company. This week, they're driving bus. Next week, they're driving taxi. The week after, they're driving tour bus. Whatever it is. If I'm wrong, please correct me. Because you all have opened Pandora's box. So explain the people correctly now. What are we doing? <coughs> when I go down... I noticed that under the general rules, there's also additionally, the completion of mandatory training may serve as a requirement to renew the license come January 1st. All people have to reapply, to reapply you said. So what kind of training exactly do they have to go through? Why isn't that now clear in the law or in a notice? You're going to wait till they come to reapply to tell them, oh, but you need to do A, B, C, D. And then that's going to take months to be done and the people can drive and make a living. Well, what are you doing? You all are not serious. You all have no clue what you're really doing. I have no issue with training people. I believe People should be trained, especially taxi drivers that function like ambassadors to this country. And some bus drivers can have a, a good training in saying good morning, good afternoon, and not being mad with their customers. But what is it? When is it going to happen? What is it going to cost the people? All of these things need to be said, but they are not being said. You have then also under the general rules, all licensed operators seeking to employ drivers or obtain a license for an assistant driver, chauffeur in Dean's Betrekking, which means they are a driver, be the driver or assistant driver, they are a driver, are required to establish their operation as a business. This is going to become a serious problem. This means obtaining a business license where required. I mean, where required. The only place you get goddamn business license is by government. What do you think? They're giving them out on a boardwalk? Well, we're required. We're required by TIAP. TIAP gives business licenses. And or registering the business at the Chamber of Commerce. That's a sole proprietorship then. But remember this. Since we are playing smart man, nobody that isn't Dutch can just go and register a sole proprietorship. They need to get a business license through TIAT. And then they can go back to the Chamber of Commerce. That's how that works. Because that law ain't changed yet. And that means all those that don't hold a Dutch passport and got a plate, go have something coming towards them yet for the, for the New Year's. You see, the problem is once you have to register as a business and the people become your employees, 
so that they have to go and register at the SRV, SRV can't accept them because the SRV law doesn't allow that. They don't recognize taxis and bus drivers on, um, as medically um, insurable. That's how it is. And that was one of the loopholes that the National General Health Insurance was going to close. But it can't close it because it only starts on the 1st of January 2025 on its earliest. So what happens in 2024 now? There's a law that says you must have a company. Your bus driver must be insured by SFV. But it cannot. The law doesn't allow that. So what are we going to do? The clock is ticking. Today is November 20th. You have exactly 41 days to change this. Minister. Oh boy. It also tells you that assistant drivers in accordance with Article 7 of the Public Transportation Ordinance must be registered as employees of businesses at the Department of Labor and SFV. Now, SFV it cannot be. It can't be. At Labor now, you're going to register him at Labor. Is the Labor Department going to give them medical insurance? SFV can't. So who's going to give it to them? Because you're mandatory. You must be mandatory insured. Once you're working for somebody, if you're working within a period of so much time, I think it's three days, four days, something like that. How is this going to work, people? You all open a Pandora's box and it's going to be a problem. Enforcement of this requirement for existing license holders shall commence January 1st, 2024. This is written under point three of the general 5.1 general rules in the law published in September, end of September, I believe, 29th or something like that. It is crazy. This is just outright crazy. Now, the prohibition on the leasing of licenses will be strictly enforced. What do you mean with leasing? That people drive and pay the owner of the plate money every week? If that's leasing, I think you're going the right way. But the people that work for companies or work for these plate holders, how are they going to work? How are they going to work? Because you mean, basically you're telling them that nobody can't work for nobody anymore or they must become an employee. If that's how you want to regulate it, I understand that, and, and again, nothing against that, but regulate it correctly. Now, the way you have it, you have not regulated it. You have created chaos because come January 1st, 2024, nobody can be insured. So you can put him in, 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 in service, and then you're going to tell the employer he's breaking the law by not insuring his people. When SFV tells you, you cannot insure by me because my law doesn't allow it. So where are we going? But like I said, Again, this whole thing about health drivers is going to become a problem because how do you check the people that are ill? How do you substantiate the letters that they bring in that they are ill? Or if they are chronically ill, what is the regulations for them? If they can't drive anymore because they had a stroke, are you taking the license away from them? Or are you telling them, start a company and pay their salary because how do you regulate that? Your pay salary, taxes, AOV, AVV, um, and whatever other type is, about 20% of the salary is premiums. How do you regulate this? You see, these are the things, I don't know if they were thought through when they did this. It's going to create a very, very serious problem. You are going to be honest about this. Before you go and create a bigger disaster in the public transportation, I think you have to sit on a minute and look at it from different angles. I, I, I want to say this. The, in here, some places, an article that the minister says he can 
assign people routes. Are you crazy? Are you crazy, sir? You can't assign a damn person a route. There's an organization. There's a ministry of fiat. When you start giving people routes, you undertake, brother. Let me tell you, you're straight in your face. Then you undertake. Because there's a study called Changing Lanes. Maybe nobody told you about it. It's in existence for about 10 years already. Had you told me you were going to introduce Changing Lanes to St. Martin, I would have been waving a flag for you of victory. Because nobody drives to Point Blanche. Nobody drives down to Cahill. Nobody drives to Middle Region. Please. Please. That's what Changing Lanes was about. Everybody want to drive to Maho. Everybody want to drive to Marigot. Or Dutch Quarter, French Quarter. Or St. Peter's. Because those are the lucrative routes. But you know, if it wasn't for accessible ventures, anybody that's ill that had to go to the hospital would be walking in the hot sun because there is no transportation. There is none. Accessible Ventures does it for 50 cents or 75 cents to help people out of the goodness of their hands. These people do this. Once an hour they are driving. I've seen them. They turn in there by Grand Marche and they do their thing. So again, I, I, I need to understand what you all mean with what you're doing here with the minister going to assign specific routes. Are you crazy? That one there, what you do Don't call me, I can't answer right now. Then when you look at, for the record keeping applications, now you cannot do that because now you're getting back to the, the little game played, for example, by the minister of Romy. When he was going to give out all the Vineyard Heights slots. Throw everybody application from before. Tell his people to apply fast. And then you start to first come first serve basis. You people must believe everybody's stupid. Things should stay on record for five years. And after five years, yes, you can clean it up. But you can't clean it up after six months. You can't throw out applications after six months and then say, okay, let the new ones come in now because we're going to give out some moratorium. Um, lift the moratorium and give it out again. Because this is the game we play politically. But you're not protecting the people. You're protecting your stooges. That's what you're doing. Elections coming, all kind of nonsense happening. That we give out lands and these type of bus licenses, common. I've seen it for the past 30 years. So I really thought that we were going to do something good. But to the contrary, they opened Pandora's box. Minister not even telling you which routes you could drive. Like he gonna assign you routes and tell these others you all only driving Middle Region and are you only driving town? I mean, this is crazy. That's what changing lanes was for. That's why you have a ministry. I mean, you know, I, 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 I try to understand it, but I really can't. So this thing about applications will expire after six months? Stop it. After five years. You know, first preference, and this is where it gets ticklish, number 11. First preference will be given to persons of Dutch nationality. So that means you're going to give it to others too. When did this law change? When did this change, minister? Because you all are putting things in the law. It must be substantiated someplace. When I read this, I must believe that the law changed. But we can't see the law. Now, there are a bunch of applications for bus and taxi. And again, for drivers. And, you know, they want a valid Chamber of Commerce registration. The driver doesn't have that. The company has that. Proof of registration of the employees at SFV. Company has that. Which means, if I read this, that the oldest persons getting the permits the companies so what is happening right now where drivers used to have to go and get their own permits it's finished that can't be so anymore because the law doesn't allow that so i don't want to hear you asking for the driver blue card and all that because you can't come january 1st with this law you cannot you will get a card 
from the company. Because every license holder is a company. I hope you all inform the controllers on the road. Because I get it. Sometimes I, I swear to God, you all just do some things and frighten the living hell out of everybody. Now, <coughs> when you look at the tours and the unregulated, the G plates, unregulated transportation, that's G, I decided to just browse through that. And I found something strange. Because for the unregulated transport, G, that was the school children, the elderly and disabled, employees in groups to and from the place of employment, like hotel employees. So I, I live with that. I can understand that. But then there was one more hidden in there. Airport transfers. In general, hotel shuttle services. Now you see, is that little piece between brackets. In general, hotel shuttle services. Must I understand with this that there's a bus that will pull up there that says, for example, Morgan or Maho. And anybody going there jumps on that bus because it's free, like how it is in America. They don't have to take a taxi. They don't have to take uh, anything, no, no, no service, because the hotel has shuttle buses that come down and pick them up. Because I would want to assume that those buses will have a wrapping of that hotel. Because if they don't have it, we don't know what's really happening. So I, I, I try to understand this one because this is taking bread out of the mouth of the taxi drivers that pay to be at the airport, pay to be at the harbor, because if the shuttle service can work at the airport, when you have home porting in Samantha, which we have, are those G plates that have to go up there too and pick up the tourists and bring them to a hotel if they have a post day or pre stay? How does that work? We, we need to understand this a little better. Come January 1st, 2024, are we to see G plates at the airport picking up hotel guests? So do we still need taxi drivers then? Now, the car rental, <coughs> when you look at the rules there, I found one rule that was a little strange, but applicants must indicate the desired number of vehicles to operate the business. This amount must be supported with proof of inventory or proof of financing to secure the requested number of vehicles. So if I ask for a license for 25 plates, I got to show that I can buy 25 cars right away. And or I, that I have the money for it or if I have the cars. And if I don't, I won't get it. That's, that's what I'm reading here. So it means that unless you got a few hundred thousand dollars lying around, a car rental licensing really owes anymore. That, that's what it means. But hey, we're working for the people who try to give all them a little something. And here comes one of these other crazy articles. The ministry. See? Not the minister, eh? The ministry reserves the right to add or remove requirements as deemed necessary. Uh, based on what? You all just did a whole study. You all said that this thing will change for now. For the next three years, it's staying like this. And then it will be reviewed if needed. But yet you throw a little line in between the ministry reserves the right to change it. Are there any guidelines that we're going to be working with to say, okay, we're going to be checking this for the next six months next year, and then we're going to make changes? Or is it just whenever we feel like we bust a little change up and we go again. You, you see what's strange here? That, that article there, huh? the ministry reserves the right to add and remove requirements as deemed necessary. Open-ended. This updated policy shall go into effect September 27, 2023 and shall be reviewed within three years if the need arises. But we give enough licenses for five years. So if you change things in the law, does it affect the license that was issued for five years? Or does it affect it when you go to renew it? Be clear in the law with this. Be clear. Because you can't just change the rules of the game 
as you go along. People that start a business make a business plan. They're not like government. They make a business plan so they can survive. A government gets tax money so they can survive. But businesses do it a little different. You can't just go and change the rules of the game because you deem it necessary. How do they survive? <coughs> what are we sharing this time for elections? We promised the neighborhood, I think it was Dutch Quarter in particular, that we're going to do a lot of things. We're going to fix the sewage, make sure all the shit water is off the roads. Not yet. We were going to fix the main road in Dutch Quarter. We were going to do this and do that because the conditions are bad. Elections coming, but not yet. Budget didn't approve yet. Amended budget, so no money. All the homes they promised to repair. It was a thousand homes or something. And they said they were going to build, repair, whatever it was. Not yet. What about Martin Luther King School? Six years ago, the hurricane struck it, damaged the roof beyond repair. Nothing yet. The kids are in different schools around the island. Land sharing, but only to family and friends. Elections coming. You know, I said that the minister of Tiat had extended the contract of the Jaguar airport. I was told, boy, Bon Campa dying true. It was signed off by the Prime. As she's the only one responsible for the airport. So I said, you know what? Let me publicly ask the question. Who signed the contract of Mr. Brian Mingo to be extended for one year as a CEO? Was it the Minister of Tiat by extension because he had a mandate, or was it the Prime Minister who represents the Council of Ministers? You know, the questions about who evaluated him and what Skip Paul thinks about him, I will leave that for others because I ain't wasting my time. I realize that now suddenly they're fixing the lights at Jose Lake Cooper. Four years the minister has been sitting there. Elections coming? So we go fix lights. Big tournament over the weekend. Minister standing up there just to stand up because he wasn't given all the trophies. The one that financed it was giving it out. What going on, minister? Who's the minister of sports now? Not because you're all telling people it's so mean it's so. Eh? We have realized the lies that keep coming. Wednesday now is postulation day. The no party will be handing in its list at 1.30 in the afternoon. I ask all our supporters to come out, dress in yellow, put on your shirt if you have one already, and come down. We will tell you exactly where we're meeting, where we're leaving from, and we will be heading to the parliament building to hand in our list by our leader and the president of the party at 1.30 on Wednesday. And on Thursday, we will sign up the list starting at 9 o'clock in the morning at the census office so get ready because the time has reached we have a utility company in dire need for money and there seems to be no help coming from the government we still have no amended budget 2023 no budget 2024 police officers becoming uh, prison guards ain't receiving no money country being robbed left right and center because nobody on the road Infrastructure repairs have become a mockery. The Prince Bernard Bridge was painted, parade pass, but still can't be used because they can't buy material. So that the public works boys who fixed the whole previous piece of the bridge can go and finish the job. But we work in hand. Thursday now, hopefully we will have the verdicts of the court cases and we will hopefully see an end come to those type of things that the country can move forward. Nelson Mandela once stated, anybody who changes their principles depending on whom they are dealing with is not fit to lead. We have seen that over and over and over in the past four years. This government has failed to plan so often that failure has become a norm for them, but not for us. The people deserve better. On Wednesday now, I will not have a podcast because I'll be preparing to hand in the now list that I will be supporting as your number two candidate. 
On Friday, I'll be back at 9.30 with another topic that I believe deserves the attention and the information for the people of Samaritan. Take care for now and see all of you all on Wednesday at Postulation. 130 Parliament Building, the yellow team will be walking in to give in the winning list. Please share my podcast and also like and subscribe to my YouTube page. Have a great week ahead. Bunks love you and I'm out.